In early times, evil spirits were thought to possess people and make them act in strange and frightening ways. By the 1800s, the study of this hysteria led some doctors to believe one person could have separately functioning personalities. In this rare research film from the 1920s, a woman has different personalities who believe they are separate people. One is a male who is not comfortable in women's clothes. Another is a small child. The affliction has been known by different names, but recognized for centuries. Today, it is called multiple personality disorder. <laughs> a college student has many personalities, and one of them wants to kill her. A 40-year-old policeman has, living within him, a tortured child. But Dad, can you tell me? A wife and mother becomes a five-year-old who is just learning to write her name. Why have they become tormented and broken into different personalities? What is the childhood pain that lies buried in the unknown depths of their minds? How can they search for the deadly memories that hold the secrets of their past and the promise of their healing? Twice a week, Gretchen walks across town to see her therapist. She can't afford a car because what little money she has goes for therapy. Gretchen is divorced and has two children who she hardly ever sees. It just hit me that I'm 34 and that I should be, you know, with my kids, mothering my kids, and I should already have a career and I should already be somewhere doing something. For most of her adult life, Gretchen has had severe psychiatric problems. She's needed treatment for years, but doctors never agreed about why. Okay. Okay, good time to come out. I didn't know and I was waiting. No, this is a good time. This is a good time. We were talking about anger. Not... I know, I don't like... I don't... Two years ago, Gretchen was diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. She struggles to function every day and is desperately trying to understand what is wrong. Regin's problems began when she was a child. I, I always felt different. I didn't feel like I was like everyone else or anyone else. Um, and I thought I was crazy and I would hear that in my head too. We are so good at hiding ourselves and appearing normal. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. I don't want to appear abnormal in any way. I want to fit in. All of these categories would be considered subordinate. This Gretchen has returned to school to finish her degree. She is an honor student at a small college in upstate New York. Anything else? I want to clarify. Um, I thought the subordinate was a higher, more general, and well, subordinate. Okay. I've got it backwards? You've got it backwards. All right. Superordinate. Gretchen is also studying art and has classes in painting and sculpture. It's difficult for me in school a lot. Something occurs in the class, and we're instantly overwhelmed. I need to find a safe place. I need to run out of the room and find a safe place to be. When Gretchen is in distress, she switches to a personality that is emotionally stronger. You know, if Gretchen's having a hard day, um, I, I come out and, and I go to class. I take exams, I, I, can, I study. I, and, and a lot of that's easier for me to do than it is for her. I, I just seem to pick up concepts faster. She gets so nervous and stuff. An aggressive personality emerges when Gretchen must be assertive and handle stressful situations. The personality, who goes by the name of myself, is often hostile and critical of Gretchen. She gets so overwhelmed that she can't think clearly. Um, she becomes frightened, she becomes depressed and non-functional. She just doesn't function. She, she will just sit and do nothing. When others come out, I, I don't always know what's happening. What happens to me is I, I get pulled in 
I feel like I'm just shutting down. I'm I'm very far away. I can't. Then I have no conscious awareness of what's going on out here. To keep very still. When Gretchen switches to another personality, she is often unconscious while the other personality is in control. Sometimes she loses hours. Sometimes a whole day. Gretchen communicates with her other personalities by writing back and forth in a journal. My writing myself. Each personality has a different handwriting. I requested when we started this that please, when someone is out, will they please write the date, the day, and the time, and where they were, who they might have seen, if they would please give me an idea of where the body's been. Because it was hard for me not to know where this body's been, to come out and find myself in a place, or realize that half a day's been, half a day's gone, did we go to class, did we meet who we were supposed to meet? Gretchen is troubled by disturbing images and having feelings of uncontrollable panic. As Gretchen studied one night in the library, someone nearby began to clean with a vacuum. The sound caused her to panic, and she started to run. We tried to help. Gretchen experiences panic attacks that are triggered by certain sights and sounds. The attacks can happen any place, at any time. All right, well, what are we going to do? What do you need to do? Um, can I go somewhere safe? Go somewhere safe. Hate, 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 hate. Gretchen is mutilated by a personality that feels she should be hurt and punished. The mutilation takes the form of cutting and happens outside of Gretchen's knowledge or control. She cut pretty seriously and, and, and left, it, left it in the book for me. I mean, I was, when I came out, I was, I was a mess, I was covered. And the book was covered with the blood. One night, Gretchen was working in the art studio at school when a destructive personality took control. She found herself with cuts on her arm and blood on her clothes. Gretchen returned to school to see what had happened. What happened here, Gretchen? Oh, we got cut. Last I remember, it was 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. And I don't remember anymore. I didn't know that we'd been cut till the next afternoon. I need to clean this up. The mutilation has been happening for years. Hundreds of cuts have been inflicted on Gretchen's arm and on other parts of her body. But this cutting is more serious than most. Her life is becoming unmanageable and dangerous. I need to know what happened to me so that I can deal with it and and heal from it. I can't heal from something I don't know what it's about. I need, I need to understand it as best I can so that I can go on with my life. Gretchen traveled 2,000 miles to get specialized treatment at a psychiatric hospital in Texas, which has a specialty in treating multiple personality disorder. There's one thing to get a memory. Hospital therapy focuses on recovering repressed memories. Like Gretchen, 
everyone here is struggling to come to terms with the truth about their past. Being able to accept what you, you're getting, your memories, may mean that you also have to accept something about someone you don't want to. What's the most painful thing about it? Believing that that really happened. To you? To this body. I know I could hear the screaming in my head to run. But there wasn't anywhere to run. I was in a, in a corner. I, th I think. Except that I don't... I can see... my body as a child, as it was as... Gretchen a explained her increasingly vivid flashbacks to her therapist at the hospital. Who is Kevin Hinckley? You've been asking for a long time. Years. You've been asking inside to get memories, to complete memories, to know what's going on in there. And now it's happening. It, it feels real close. come to the point where I, I pretty much accept that something happened to me and that I was sexually abused. When I try to think that um, of who it might might be, and I and I'm I seem to get I'm getting closer and closer to feeling like um, I may I may know who that might be, or or it may probably be. That doesn't fit with what I know that I experienced and that I saw and that I hear and that I it um, everything fits but it doesn't fit I, ha I had a wonderful life I have lots of happy memories I have lots of wonderful things in my childhood the legs go up to a white shirt in therapy personalities began to emerge who had experienced abuse that Gretchen herself didn't remember. Kevin asked questions to try and piece together what had happened. Is there a beard on the chin? No. No beard? A personality who was a frightened child remembers the approach of someone who hurt her. If I get real small, if I get real, real small, nobody... The memories became increasingly really vivid. Small and were experienced as if the abuse were actually happening. Past and present were indistinguishable. We're still in Texas. It's 1992. You're safe. But I know this is a real scary memory. What are you seeing? Big, big hands. Big, big, big hands. hands? What's happening with the big hands? When the experience was too much to bear, the child personality tried to escape into the wall. Big, big hands. Uh -huh. Big hands. When alter personalities have memories and relive abuse, Gretchen herself gets closer to remembering what happened to her. Who's here? <clears throat> it's myself. <laughs> the best thing about journal writing is we just come popping out. Um, that's my writing. That's my writing. See, I go on for pages. That's Gretchen's writing. You used to hurt Gretchen? I would do anything to destroy anything she did and to hurt her in any way I could. 
And I used to be one of those inside that belitt belittled her and called her names and swore at her and, and hurt her. I, I cut the shit out of her. And, and I'm very good at it. I, I'm the one who severed the artery in the four tendons. Why did you do that? I wanted, I wanted to kill her. I hate her. What did she do? I stopped growing at 14 because that's when she began becoming interested in, in boys and dating and all of that. And I hated it. I didn't want any part of it. So I, I quit. I wasn't going to be any more than 14 because nobody was ever going to touch me. And whenever that would happen with Gretchen, it would hurt me and I would hate it. I would hate her and I would hate her for letting that happen. So I cut her. We have to be able to build Gretchen's self, uh, her sense of her own control, her ability to resist the urges to switch, the urges to cut, the, uh, the urges to have to uh, mutilate. And Gretchen's case was discussed in a hospital staff meeting where therapists and psychiatrists consult and make therapeutic decisions. I think she's experiencing a lot of anxiety because her body, she says, why is my head hitting the wall? Why is somebody cutting my arm? Is she aware of why all of this is happening to her physically? She's slowly coming to grips with that. One of the things that I've tried to have her understand is that internally she has a a tremendous pressure that's going on. There's a tremendous conflict between those inside that have carried the memories for so long who want, who want other people to know what happened to them. They no longer want to carry these memories. There's a tremendous pressure for them to tell their stories about what occurred. Gretchen's memories were still blocked and the impasse was beginning to affect the progress of her therapy. Other personalities needed to be reached so their memories could bring her closer to a cure. <laughs> Gretchen was given a drug called sodium amytal, which acts like a truth serum. The drug helps break through resistance to remembering the past. She was restrained because some personalities could be violent. The incident we were talking about yesterday with Gretchen as a child in the corner and the legs coming in. What do you know about that? Yes, they're still there. Okay. Stay with the bathroom for a moment. Then what happened? They, um... Need everybody to stay in the bathroom this time. Let's finish this. They, they moved in the bathroom over to us. And then what? Then there was a penis in our mouth. Yeah. Yuck! Whose penis was it? I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, what do you see? Uh, my jaw hurts, my mouth hurts. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Memories began to surface about oral and vaginal abuse that had occurred in a bathroom. So far, these were the most specific and detailed memories to come out. But then, another personality named Enigma appeared. A dangerous personality at the core of Gretchen's self-destruction. Enigma, what, hap what happens to you if the puzzle gets solved? Huh? Are you punished in some way? She, did, I'll kill her before you kill her! I'll kill her before you kill her! Guess what? The good news is I'm not going to kill her. There's no punishment. I'm not going to hurt her, and I have no intentions of killing her. We're going to keep her safe, and that's where I need your help. She belongs in the bed. No, she, she doesn't. Belongs in the no, bed. no, that's what the abuser said, and it was not true. <laughs> Enigma's job is to kill the body should these memories come out, uh, and you hear halfway through the interview her saying, uh, I'll kill her before you do. 
uh, makes me wonder if there was some kind of threat that says, if you ever talk, we'll kill you. And this is kind of what I look like. That's about how old I am, that picture. She looks pretty happy. And I'm... Gretchen was exhausted after therapy, so an untroubled child personality emerged. This is a picture I cut out. How old are you? I'm eight. We haven't had a very good couple of days. Everything's been... Um, everyone's been up in arms. Yeah, what's been going on? It's... Well, I don't know all of the details, but... Um, there's been a lot of people that are upset and hurting inside. And hurting, hurting stomachs and hurting throats. And the worst part is hurting hearts. Sometimes our hearts, we have hurting hearts. But I try to just help out. Plus, I get to have some fun myself. If I'm out, I get to do something. I don't always have to work. Gretchen was unaware of the memories that had been revealed in therapy. The next step was for her to learn about the abuse that had always been too painful to remember. She doesn't understand that it was small. Do you understand that? As as we walk through this, what of the other? Pay attention to this, but also be aware of what's going yeah, on inside you. Hurt. Okay. Oh man, I don't ask too much of me, Kevin. What of the oh. others that also hurt? One that Gretchen doesn't understand is why the body wasn't able to fight more back then. In the bathroom, over to us. Kevin asked Gretchen to watch videotape of the therapy so she would know what her other personalities had remembered. But when Gretchen began to hear details of her abuse, her mind began to block the experience. This is how Gretchen protected herself when she was a child. And then there was a penis in her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay, stay connected here. What, what are you feeling right now? Get rid of me! I know. I know. Get off my feet! Get off my feet! Minutes later, confronted with the abuse, the violent personality of Enigma emerged in a rage. Do not touch his face! Do not touch his face! Is that what happened during the abuse? It is, isn't it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Kill this body. Kill this body. Go ahead. Kill this body. We shall always remain! We shall always remain! Uh... Enigma! We shall always be Enigma! We shall always be! We shall always be! You're not evil. And you're not a demon. You're not a demon. I don't, I don't know what you were taught, but it's not true. Somebody out there to get the door? I had an idea that this might happen. This is a real common reaction when things have been so far repressed down inside and then they see it on videotape for the first time or hear it for the first time. Suddenly it becomes very real and they, and they know that things happen. It makes it, the denial melts away and they're faced with the reality of the trauma and the pain. And it's, it can be a real shock. In an outpatient setting, this may take place over weeks and weeks and months. In a hospital setting, we have the ability to present it to them right away, where the shock is greater, but they get over it more quickly, and then understand what happened to them. What was going on at the time that you disappeared? What was the last thing you remember? Um, I was getting some threats and getting... Later in the day, Gretchen had recovered. Kevin spoke with her and reassured her that she would prevail and succeed in her recovery. I hear you. And part of what we're going to hope to get to is where you get to find out that you don't have to leave and you may be stronger by staying because you are more powerful than you think you are. That'd be safe.
I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for this, the survival of this body. And, and more than just the survival of this body, I don't, I don't want to just survive. I have been just surviving for a long time. This, isn't, this is no way to live. I, I would like to begin living and feeling and not just existing. After four months of treatment in Texas, Gretchen returned home and finished college, graduating summa cum laude in the top 1% of her class. She now feels she knows who her abuser is, and therapy is helping her heal and gain control of her life. Gretchen plans to continue with her education. Who does the shooting? I do. Scout does. Doc does. Who are they? Uh, they're various altars that I have. John is an expert marksman. He was an army ranger and sharpshooter. At target practice, his altar personalities take turns shooting. John's personalities have different styles of firing a gun. Scout shoots from one knee. What is your function in the system? With My John? function? Yeah. I act as the uh, observer, the scout. How do you help John? Excuse me? How do you work with John? How do you help John? I give him the information he needs from time to time. The information that uh, he's overlooked or has not noticed. John shares his job as a police officer with several personalities who have different abilities. He switches when different police skills are needed and is always aware of what his other personalities are doing. When you're out here driving around at night, who does what? Yeah, it just sort of depends on the situation. Uh, normally, I'm out quite a bit of the time. Oh, come on. What are we doing? Uh, pickup truck over here matches something we've been looking for, possibly on a stolen auto. As John began pursuit, he switched to a personality who is good at driving in high-speed chases. He's weaving pretty fast. Too. When the stop was made, there was another switch, and John returned to confront the driver of the truck. Warning. You know how fast you were going? You don't have any idea? Does your odometer work on here? Yeah, my dash light's got burned out. Dash light's got burned out. I paced you at over 75 miles an hour. Among his fellow officers, John has a good reputation. Lieutenant Pritchard is his commanding officer. John knows what's going on when, he, when he's out there in any given situation. He's, he's able to make uh, decisions on his feet in tough situations and uh, just think really fast. And this is why we were in St. Louis at the training academy. It's my rookie dog and 
me, the rookie handler. We worked patrol together for four and a half years. Uh, best partner I ever had, much better than any two-footed partner I ever worked with. John showed us his scrapbook of 13 years as a police officer. He's had many awards and commendations which began early in his career. In 1982, I was awarded the uh, Outstanding Officer of the Year Award by the JCs, which is an award that's offered every year. Hi. While he was showing us the scrapbook, John switched to a 10-year-old personality named Johnny. Hi. John had trained his dog to stay out of the living room, but when he switched, the dog entered, sensing that his master was no longer present. Okay, that's John. Who's John? Um, he's an adult, and he's a policeman. The child personality of Johnny recognizes John in the photograph and sees him as a separate person. Award, awarded as the... Johnny read the article from the scrapbook and, like a ten-year-old, had trouble understanding the words. In for cement officer of 1982 by the I don't know Jake Jakey's when John switched back the dog recognized him and left the room as he had been trained John has been divorced three times and now lives alone. He's had problems with depression and unexplainable mood swings, especially controlling his temper. John used to have a drinking problem, but has been sober for years. Did you ever go back after him? Was that okay or not? I tried. Yeah. John's therapist is Julie Clark, who has been treating him since his diagnosis. Push face first, okay? Several years ago, John began having flashbacks of being abused as a child. He began therapy, and soon after, different personalities began to appear. John was hospitalized with a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress and multiple personality disorder. Since then, personalities with memories of abuse have come forward like Edward, who remembers being shoved down a staircase. How many years older was he? Ten. It's a lot of years. Not anymore. Not anymore, huh? No. The abuse his alter personalities remember was never known by John himself. He has only vague memories of growing up. My memories of childhood are real limited. Uh, it's more like a framework. And um, I can tell you where I went to, to school. And maybe a little bit about some of the later grades. <clears throat> Along about seventh and eighth grade, I can fill in some blanks. What John can remember is a stable home and being well provided for. He also remembers the voices that have always existed inside his mind. I've always been aware that there were voices, okay, that I spoke with and that spoke to me. But I thought that was subconscious or thoughts or however you want to put it, I'm not real sure. It seemed natural, seemed normal. The voices John heard were those of his 20 personalities. Many of them are frightened children who appear only in therapy. Five-year-old Hans was tortured with electricity. Mm -hmm. How did he hurt you, Hans? Electricity. Electricity? Yeah. Do you remember how he did that? It's okay to say the words here. With the box. With the box? Uh-huh. Electrical box? Or another kind of box? 
What do you do with the box? You only have to see it for a few minutes. Let yourself see the pictures. I know you don't like it. And you know what? It's not happening today. You're here with me in the office. Hans' cries of pain only encouraged his abusers. Then John would switch to an emotionless personality named Eugene, who did not feel the pain. How was the electricity applied? To the body. How and where? It was applied by a hand-cranked type generator with wires attached to various locations depending upon what was being used at the time. In general, to the hands and feet, at times to the stomach, at times to the genital area. John was also sexually abused by both male and female perpetrators, including a priest. He created a personality whose job it was to have sex. What else did he have you do? To lick it. To lick it? Did you have any feelings when that happened? I didn't like it. Okay. It smelled bad. I didn't like that. Okay. And you don't have to do that again either. Oh, over here. Okay. I don't know. I just got curious, so I called. I found out right behind that trash can right there, outside the door. I went okay. to throw something in it, and I seen it. Without thinking, I picked it up. Okay. And then, uh... In addition to street patrol, John works on different assignments, like this search for a murder weapon. He also investigates many child abuse cases and has been appointed to a county task force setting standards for their investigations. It's very obvious that my perpetrators will never be prosecuted. At this stage in, in my life, there is no physical evidence that would link back to anyone ever having done anything to me at any given point in time in my childhood, there'd be no way to prove it in court of law. At least I'm making a difference, even as small as it is, in the area that I'm in. But there is a difference made. And maybe there's one perpetrator out there that will go to prison and he'll be known, or she'll be known. Maybe that makes a difference in, in some child or some woman's life. So that's real important to us. On a Saturday morning in a large northwestern city, Barb and her family are shopping for groceries. Barb and Pat have been married for nine years and have three daughters. Today, they're with Hannah, who is nine, and Lori, who is six. This isn't what you want, huh? Pat is off work on weekends from his warehouse job, and Barb manages their household. I know you like candy, but that's not what we're buying today. Okay, well, you guys get to pick two cereals, so you each get to pick one. Stop. Let them up. As they come to the breakfast food section, the children's cereal there appeals not only to her daughters, but to a child within Barb, a five-year-old personality named May. What would you like? I'm going to get that one, but not if it's not the strawberry one I don't want. You don't want a strawberry one? No, I don't want one if it's not. Oh, it's got to be strawberry. Huh? Well, let's find out. When Barb switches to the personality of May, her eyesight changes. Barb's vision needs to be corrected by strong glasses, but May can barely see through them. Oh, you don't want to wear Barb's glasses? Okay. There you go. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, put them in the box. No, it's just two of them, girls. You want the box that you eat just the two cereals? No, no, it was just two oh, cereals. I like those ones, Hannah. Bob's daughters are familiar with May, okay, and Pat, who sees her often, treats her like the child she almost literally is. Her language and Look thoughts around. are those of a five-year-old. I was thinking if we might need some cookies. I think we have some cookies. I think we have lots of cookies. We have some chips and stuff, too. Okay. Okay? Yeah. We're ready to go now. Do you want to go get Bob now? Well, everyone, buy me something else, like something. I think we're, this is good for now, okay? We'll get you something else next time. Okay. Okay. Here you go. She didn't want to wear them. When Pat and Barb were married, Barb had been in therapy for severe depression, but no one suspected that she had other personalities. Well, we were in bed one night, and um, she woke me up because she wasn't sleeping. She was sitting in bed, and I sat up, and she, she asked me who I was. I said, I'm Pat. I'm your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. I'm only nine years old. What are you doing in my bed? Barb knows almost nothing about her other personalities. Her mind protects her with amnesia from knowing things that would be traumatic or upsetting. Barb is now 34 and has virtually no memories before the birth of her children. What is your first memory? First memory. Clear memory, something that I really know is a memory. I guess it would be when um, Pat and I were driving in the car. We were on our way to a Lamaze class, which he usually slept through. <laughs> and we were trying to come up for a name for the baby. And um, all of a sudden he said something about his grandma, Hannah. And I said, that's the name. That's the name I want to name the baby. How old were you? 23. Barb developed multiple personality disorder because she needed to cope with the tremendous disparity between the life that her family expected her to reflect to the outside world and what was actually going on in that household. Barb's therapist is Stephen Feldman, who is an acknowledged expert in the treatment of multiple personality disorder. Her father was a prominent, successful, dentist. Uh, he was a professor at the university. He had a flourishing private practice. Her mother was a professional and for all intents and purposes they were the model family. But Barb's family was profoundly troubled. Notes from a psychiatrist who counseled Barb as a child suggest that her home life was chaotic and that Barb's mother dealt with the family's problems mainly by denying they existed. Barb developed an ulcer and when she was 13, had the first of several abortions performed during her teenage years. I think that she was tortured for years and years and years. I think that she was physically abused, sexually abused, psychologically abused. Her father was a very sadistic and horrible person. I've got something in my pocket that belongs across my face. I keep it very Barb's amnesia for her childhood enables her to live free from the burden of her past. But her abuse is not really forgotten. Those memories exist in the minds of her other personalities. Personalities who lead different lives. When an altered personality takes control, Barb may disappear for days at a time. She finds herself far from home, occasionally in other states, and once in Canada. When this happens, Barb experiences a total loss of time. You want some people on it? I'm going to do something funny. No, no, I can't. No, I can't do it. Wait, I'm not done. Barb's personalities are different ages. Her daughter's games cause Barb to switch to a child personality who emerges because she is most suited for play. 
Switching often happens in response to changes in Barb's environment. What's that? What's that? Lori's used to her mother's other personalities, but the switches are not so easy for her husband, Pat. Make it have a foot shape on it. Don't do that, May. It's not good to, to have that in your mouth. Go away. <laughs> I'm going to go away. Okay. It's hard because okay. here I am still wanting to act toward her like her husband, you know, and I get pushed away. And, you know, that gets real confusing and real hard to do sometimes. You know, i got to sit back and realize, well, this isn't my life. I can't do this. I can't just come up behind her and hug her. Because there are some altars that don't want to be hugged, you know, don't want to be touched. Oh my gosh, never mind. A N K H. Often, Pat must care for their three daughters and manage the house alone. The children have learned to accept their mother's absences, the times when Barb has switched to another personality. You haven't touched your burger yet, Lauren. Mm hmm. Have you? Lori, what did you do? Some of Barb's personalities don't relate to the family. One of them is a teenage girl named DJ. DJ is different than Barb in her posture, voice, and language, and also smokes, a habit Barb dislikes. DJ also has different thoughts and feelings. How do you feel about Barb's children in terms of whether they're your children or not your children? They're not. I mean, I care about them and stuff. But they're not my kids. <laughs> they're barbs. DJ emerges when Barb needs to drive because driving makes Barb nervous. DJ is emotionally stronger and has memories that Barb doesn't. Memories of abuse. He's a dentist, right? And uh, he'd drill on her teeth drill on other parts of her body with his dentist drill. Beat the shit out of her, you know, kick her and shit like that. When Barb couldn't run from her father, she escaped into her mind, leaving another personality to experience and contain the worst memories of torture. Like burned up. Kitty. He burned up a kitty. Was it your kitty? Ooh, my gray one. It was your gray one. The emotional pain that Barb experienced as a child is isolated in the personality of seven-year-old Audrey, who is locked in the past. Now close your eyes. Now you know that I'm holding your hand right here in this room, right? And I wasn't there when you all were really little and Roger was there, was I? I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm holding your hand, then you have to be here in my office with me, don't you? Okay. Many of Barb's now, personalities are involved in therapy, but some are resistant and difficult to deal with. I don't get a fucking thing to say. The last time when you were breaking stuff, you said when you start hearing all those things going on inside, all that chaos going on inside, that it makes you do that stuff to try and quiet everything down. I don't want to talk about nothing. Why? Because I don't. Why? As a small girl, Barb was physically unable to fend off the abuse. And because she knew that boys were stronger, Barb created male personalities who could fight. Devin is a teenage boy. Why don't you just fucking leave me alone? Barb's father was not her only abuser. He frequented the local bars where he made friends that shared his interests. My father would bring people home um, that were also you know, open-minded and interested in having sex with a young girl. I think there were a lot of men that were. and. Uh, he would have me have sex with them. Sometimes he would ask me to tell them that I was a virgin. That seemed to heighten their interest. And uh, he would get paid. Let's see. This is more her style of a tank top. 
Okay. Okay. Is mine. <laughs> Barb created a personality which made it easier to tolerate her abuse. A personality with different feelings about her body. And what's your name? Carrie. When Carrie is out, there can be serious problems. She feels no responsibility to the family and has caused difficulties for years. Very different. I've always been money missing. You know, I've been, uh, and it's always a couple hundred dollars at a time, or I had six hundred dollars disappear once. And, I mean, the only thing, it was obvious to me that she spent it, but at the time we didn't know she was a multiple, and uh, she had no explanation. I mean, I had to believe her when she said she didn't know because it was just too obvious from talking to her that she really didn't know what was going on. Apparently, the police have already called Barb and told her that they had gotten reports from like 17 different businesses on uh, return checks and were concerned. I still don't know what's going on with that. I haven't talked to anyone myself about it. All right. Unknown to Barb or anyone, Hello. Carrie has written $1,500 worth of bad checks, money the family doesn't have. Pat is trying to get a loan from his credit union to pay the debt. Have a headache? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Been resting a while? Mm -hmm. We got another thing from a credit place. From a um, collection agency. Mm -hmm. What check was that for? I don't know. I didn't look. Hmm. Oh no, you had an appointment today, you didn't you? Muffin. Hey, sweetie. How are you? Fine. And there's another little muffin. Hey, cutie. Where's my kisses? Where's my kisses? How was school today? Come on, you. Good. Mail too. They have three girls that love mail. That evening, we checked back with the family. Pat got the loan and was able to make good on the bad checks. And in another room, Barb had switched to Carrie again. So we were able to talk with her about what had happened. What happened to the money? I spent it. What did you spend the money on? I bought clothes and perfume and jewelry and... Um, I just had a good time, whatever I wanted, ate wherever I wanted to eat. Yeah? Yeah. Why? How would you feel if you were in my position? I don't know. Tell me one more time what your position is. I am stuck here. I don't have a life. I am... I feel used. I feel very used. I'm only allowed out when it's not something anyone else wants to handle. It's really not fair. Other personalities' antagonism toward Barb take even more serious forms. What we need to do is to get get another x-ray and then put another splint on it, but one that'll help help protect these fingers from moving mm -hmm. through here. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit too much volume. In a fit of anger, right Barb's male personality has punched a concrete wall and broken her hand in four places. And the violence against her can be even more appalling. Okay. I don't know how it happens. I just find burns on my face and they'll... large blisters and it's so painful you know burns really hurt Barb's mutilations by other personalities are acts of self-hatred and self-punishment for being abused once after a drug overdose Barb's car was set on fire from the inside later Barb found herself in intensive care breathing on a respirator she had barely escaped with her life We were with Barb and her family when a dangerous time had come again. All her personalities were threatening to kill her 
so Barb decided to seek protection in a psychiatric hospital. You just move over. You can sit down. You can sit here. I think if I didn't have children, it wouldn't be so bad. But for their sake, I mean, I don't know what they would, how they would deal with it if anything else happened. I don't know how they've made it as far as they have and come through as well as they have. Barb's father is dead, but he has left a legacy of never-ending pain. His abuse has affected all their lives. Made me real angry at him and uh, at her mom. But uh, like I say, that's past. He's gone. You know, we we got to let all that go and just work with what's left. He destroyed her. We got to put her back together. It's a terrible, terrible thing you did. I just wish she was here to, you know, to pay up. their stories to be told have acted with enormous courage and concern for children who continue to be abused. Their wish is that from the shattered experience of their lives, the reality and consequences of child abuse will become better known and better prevented. Multiple personality disorder shows the extraordinary capacity of the mind to invent ways of bearing the unbearable. And these people also show us that when allowed to give up its secrets, the human mind can heal itself. <laughs>